Hello, good morning everyone and good day. Welcome to our second module, which is Poetry from the Archipelago. So we're going to talk about different poetry from the region or from our archipelago, from the region. But first and foremost, what is poetry? So poetry is probably the most sophisticated of all literary genres. So if you think about it, poetry has a unique, a unique form of literature. So the Filipino ancestors through oral tradition shared epics, proverbs, riddles, and folk songs in poetic form with a specific formal scheme in which they strictly followed. So back then, our ancestors are already using poetry, especially in riddles and folk songs, in epics, and in proverbs. So poetry is still the chosen genre of many local writers, for it offers a uniqueness that other genres may not achieve. The opportunity to see the world anew with every single written word. So I think much we we appreciate more poetry than those other genres because poetry has a special effect on people, especially when it comes to your life, to your a relationship with someone so it has an effect a unique effect to us rather than the novels or the essays so poetry has a has a special place in our hearts right so philippine poetry it's form language and speech so Philippine poetry is not different from its other counterparts around the world since in the early 1900s Filipino poetry celebrated romanticism and several poems about love flourish so during the 1900s most of the poems are already romanticism so most of the poems are already about love and as the years went on poetry become more formalist the emphasis of is is more on the form and language that the poet use rather than the theme itself. So as the years went on, kasagara ng gipanggamit sa mga writers are emphasizing more on the form itself and the language that the poet may use rather than the theme itself. So kung sa unang panahon, the writers focus more on the theme, as the years went on, the writers are focusing more on the language and the form of the poetry, not just the theme itself. So the modern poetry is crowded, and nowadays, writers are more adventurous in their craft. Here are some elements of poetry that local writers use in their poem. The first one is the senses and images. So the, oh, these are used by the writer to describe their impressions of their topic or object of writing. The kinds of sense impressions in poetry are categorized in mainly the following. First one is the visual imagery, what the writer wants you to see. So from example, sa mga poems nga tong nabasa, sometimes when we try to picture out the lines that the, that the writer wants us to see, is makita na to beauty of the face, so sa kataw, the nose, the eyes is brown, oh, the cheeks are red, so we can see it visually in our image, in our mind. Next one is the olfactory imagery, what the writer wants you to smell, right? So the writer wants you to smell something through the use of words. Then we have the gustatory imagery, what the writer wants you to taste, well, which means, on sa may ijang gusto nga ipatilaw ni mo through the use of words. All right, this is very uh, famous, especially in doing a food critic. Oh, kaning gustatory imagery. Then we have the tactile imagery, what the writer wants you to feel. So may gusto nga ipafeel sa writer ni mo, afraid, lonely sad, what else, oh, and so on and so forth. So what the writer wants you to feel. And the last one is the auditory imagery. What the writer wants you to hear. So may gusto ni nga ipadungod ni mo. 
For example, I hear the footsteps coming from me. Tip by tip, toe by toe, it's coming near. Oh, somewhat like that. Something what the writer wants you to hear about it. Right. Then we have the diction, the second one. Filipino writers are very careful of the way they write and the words they use to form their points. Diction is the denotative and connotative meaning of the words in a sentence, phrase, paragraph, or form. Now, the question is, what is denotative and connotative? Oh, so, I know that you already know that since it has been tackled to you since you were still in grade elementary. You were still in elementary, you already tackled the denotative and the connotative meaning of the words. So, in poetry... Most of the writers are using the denotative and the connotative meaning of the words in their poem to make an emphasis and also to have a uniqueness in their poetry or in their piece. Then we have the rhyme scheme. The rhyme scheme is the way the author arranges the words, meters, lines, and stanzas to create a coherent sound when the poem is read out loud. So it may be formal or informal depending on the way the poem was written by the poet. So some of the poems has a rhyme, rhyming sound. So nga kasagaran ang nasa wahi, pariha sila og sounds. Okay? So, same sounds. So, naapoy uban nga dili magkapariha. Just like the A-B-A-B A-A-B-B Just like that, the rhyming scheme nga imong i-identify ang magkapariha nga sound sa at the end sa ilang, sa at the end sa line sa poem. Alright. So, that is the rhyming scheme. Then we have the speaker or persona. In the poem, the voice that talks to the readers are called the speaker or persona. Sometimes it refers to itself as I or me, or sometimes in the, per in the third person, such as she, he, his, or her. So you should also note that the speaker is not necessarily the poet. So many of the poems talks about uh, someone, oh, the third person. Dili lang but pasabot nga ikaw nagsuwat, ikaw na mismo or imo na ang, para imo na ang poem. But sometimes it speaks to who the reader is or naasin siya lain nga ipasabot. Okay? So, we, you have to understand in a poem nga naasin siya speaker and persona. Then we have the structure. The structure is the arrangement of words and lines either together or apart. So it also refers to the way the interdependent parts of it are organized to form a whole poem. Just like the example of here, Woman of Color by Rupi Kaur. So our backs tell stories. No books have the spine to carry. So that is an example of an arrangement of words and lines. Well, our backs is one line. Tell stories is another line. No books have is another line. The spine too is another line. And carry is another line. Oh, so naidaghan mga different lines and arrangement of words and structure. Ang kasaga or ang nakalain lain ng mga uh, writers, right. Then we have the word order. So it is either the natural or the unnatural arrangement of words in a poem. A poet may use a word grammatically or not, often called as poetic license, and may invent words too. So as you have noticed, some of the writers are inventing words. So they are able to do so because they have the poetic license. But it doesn't mean nga diha dayon po ka magimuhimu kag imong kaugaling word kay yes, there is a poetic license. Or magpataka na lang kag grammar because yes, there is a poetic license. No. You have to use the proper just a subject verb agreement, proper grammatical uh, construction for you to fit in the poetic license. Okay? So, unsang man di ay pasabot aning grammatically or not. 
For example, from the example here, what terrifies me most is how we foam. So, kung sakto pa na nga grammar, dapat ang W sa what, nako na siya. But, to emphasize a certain um, poem or a certain line, ijang gismol. Oh, so, naa si Jai Poetic License. Ana, mo na pasabot. So, di po pwede nyo pataka ka grammar diha. O marong gramming na ka. Okay? It's because of the so-called poetic license. No. The proper subject verb agreement must also be there. Okay? Then, sometimes, as in, in common Filipino writers who write in English word, Filipino poet use local words to add more locality to a given poem. So, I'll be giving you an example of that later on. Kinamatay his gutan nga poem that is fit on the word order. Word order. Which is, the Filipino writers are using Filipino words in their English piece. So, if the Filipino word does not have a direct English translation, then the poet may use a Filipino word and italize it for emphasis. So, you will be able to know more about that later on. Kaya naman tayo poem nga na ana, santok ana, sa dyan nga example. Alright. So, senses, imagery, diction, rhyme scheme are emphasized in this canonical poem, Gabu, which is Gabu, one of the most widely read local poems in English by Carlos Angeles. So, Carlos A. Angeles is born on May 25, 1921 in Tacloban City, Leyte. He graduated from Rizal High in 1938, various universities in pre-med and pre-law. So he went to Ateneo de Manila, one semester only, two semesters at UP in 1941, and he became a member of the UP Writers Club and one quarter at Central Luzon Colleges. So he did not return to school after the World War II. So from 1950 to 1958, he became the chief of the Bureau of International News Services. He became the press assistant under the Garcia administration, and he became the public relations manager of Pan Am Airlines. So he also became the board of direct directors of International Pan Philippine Chapter. So he write a stun of jewels in 1963 consisting of 47 poems. In 1964, when poetry was first considered in Carlos Palanca Memorial Awards for Literature, he received the first prize of that said award. And he also received the award for the Republic Cultural Heritage Award for Literature. So he went to USA since 1978 with his family. So now we will going to read Gabu and later on we're going to uh, tackle the meaning the meaning of Gabu. Unsa manga ining Gabu and its imagery. So Gabu, the battering restlessness of the sea insist a tidal fury upon the beach that gabu and its pure consistency have hooks the wasteland hard within its reach brutal the day-long bashing of its heart against the seascape where for miles around farther than sight itself the rock stones part and drop into the elemental wound the waste of centuries is gray and dead and neutral where the sea has breached its brine, where the spilled salt of its heart lies spread among the dark habiliments of time. The vital splendor misses, for here, at Gabu, where the ageless tide recurs, all things forfeited are most loved and dear. It is the sea, pursuous habit of shore. All right, so now let's try to... Uh, cut the lines and try to figure out what are their meanings. Right, so we have the first one. The battering restlessness of the sea insists a tidal fury upon the beach. At Gabu and its spear consistency, havocs the wasteland hard within its reach. So Gabu here is a place in Ilocos Norte. 
near the sea. So often, when typhoons occur, places like this are affected greatly. For example, tsunami, storm surge. Oh. So at July 23, Typhoon Imbudo uh, went to Gabo, wherein it destructed the place. So the sea here is restless and can be destructive, just like life. So the sea here um, is a metaphor, is a metaphor for life. Wherein it is the same with life. Nga ang atong kinabuhi sometimes it is restless. So naagajud tay, naagajud tay maagian na kasamok sa kapoy sa kinabuhi. So the battering restlessness means impermanent. Oh, ang Ang kasamok po sa atong kinabuhi, dili ra po permanente. But it will, it is impermanent. So, dili man kanunay nga samok ang imong kinabuhi, restless ang imong kinabuhi, ang imong life. But sometimes, naaman po yung mga panahon nga uh, nahilunak ka. Alright. So, brutal the day long bashing of its heart against the seascape where, for miles around, farther than sight itself, the rock stones spark and drop into the elemental wood. So the turmoil of the sea is continuous and powerful because sometimes it can, it can put us down. Uh, our life's crisis can put us down. So the brutal bashing means the life's chaos. So it is continuous and powerful because sometimes our problems in life can bend us. Oh. Sometimes can more madown pa because of our life's chaos. Oh, right. So the elemental wound here means that the depths of the sea. So ang chaos ko no sa tong life, pariha kalaum sa dagat ing ana kalaum sa dagat nga na kuno nga atong kanang chaos sa life because sometimes we feel like that nga atong problema mas laum pa sa dagat oh, we feel that way so the waste of centuries is gray and dead and neutral where the sea has spread its brine where the split salt of its heart lies spread among the dark habiliments of time so the sea has been there for centuries. It has been there. Oh, so just like the life. Nga naa, naa. For how many years na nabuhi ta? Naa. The waste of the centuries means your past. So once the sea touches the shore, it becomes neutral. So the split salt means the bad luck. So... It means nga ang ato ko ng mga past na adud gihapon na. We think of it as like dili jud na nato makalintan especially ang mga ka, naagian nato nga problema, heartaches and all. So dili gyud na siya mawagtang sa atong past. Oh, mao na nga mao na gi giingon dere it, it is a waste century. Because problema mang guna nato, and it breaks our or it broke our heart. So mona si Janga, it became a waste of the century. But once the sea touches the shore, it becomes neutral. So the saltiness of the sea describes its darkness and deadness. Right. So time bears the split salt of life. Right. So the vital splendor misses for here at Gabu, where the ageless tide recurs, all things forfeited are most loved and dear. Are most loved and dear. So which means that the brilliance necessary for life is not there because in life, even the most important thing are lost. Are lost. That's why it is the sea pursues a habit of shore. So waves show that the sea is constantly moving, but always towards the shore. So ang bawd kuno 
pero medyo na sa naglihok. Just like our life. Oh, constantly moving. But always towards the shore. So, bisan pag ang bow to as a pinakaladyo, ang ijang tumong gihapon is ang shore. So, life is bounded by time. Always moving. But what we all desire is a stable and eternal ending. So, bisan pa sa unsa nga problema sa atong kinabuhi nga muagi, at the end of it, we will always uh, look for the peace and the eternal ending. Okay, gusto mang good ta, okay, sa lagi po yung problema nga dili gusto nga makuman. Diba? Life's turmoil and life's uh, problems and chaos are, will always be there, will be coming for you. Ang ato na lang is to look forward to, to look forward to the shore. Nga after all sa atong mga kasakit, the end of it, makakita na gihapon ta o peace. So, in here is the eternal ending. Wherein, shore uh, is or met metaphors the, la the afterlife. So, mo din ay pasabot sa shore dere, that at the end of our life, we will always pursue the shore. At the end of the sea, na ad na shore. Wherein, we always try to pursue it because we want to be at peace. Or we want to look forward to the afterlife. Wherein, wala na turmoil, wala na problema, and so on and so forth. So, always remember that our lives are fleeting. The only constant thing in life is change. So, life can be rough like the sea, but we can believe that if the sea can find stability once it meets the shore, we can find it too. So, I know that kung sa mga ng mga problema nga na daan to, I know that we will meet the shore. Dili ang kamatayon sa laman. But we will meet the aftermath of our problems. Kung sa kahay, hinungda nga nung kanang na, nadanin ako ang problema, manun na ako aning ang problema. Maybe because the aftermath of the problem is a reward. Nga ay mo o daeng nag ningagi ko ani kay nindot man day kadyo ang aftermath or ang, ang result sa kanin ang problema. So, that's it. That is about the Gabi. It is the sea that pursues a habit of shore. Now, I want you to answer the following. Question and write your answer on the page comment section. So, once you already saw this video, comment na lang dito sa imuhang question, I mean answer sa kaninga question. First one, what do you think represent the word sea in the poem? Second one, what is meant by the last line? It is the sea pursue with, pursues the habit of shore. And choose one line from the poem that struck you the most and explain it why. Okay? So thank you for listening and goodbye.